when we started the Five Deeps expedition, wow, three years ago, it was mainly a technological expedition to design and build a craft that could repeatedly go to the bottom of the seafloor reliably, repeatedly. And now that we accomplished that, I've really gotten interested in the science. And so now for the past two years, we've taken the whole system, the ship, the submersible, the landers, all over the world to conduct thorough science and other archaeological missions. And that's been extremely rewarding, not just to develop the system, but to put it into very good use. We've been able to go places no human's ever been before. We've gone to seven different ocean trenches to actually physically visit them. We've gotten video of hundreds of hours of geological, biological, and other things that scientists are extremely interested in. So it's just a broad swath of the entire globe that we've now gone around twice. Part of the mission that I've had over the past two years has really been to take this diving system all over the world and make it available to local scientists so they can conduct research effectively in their own backyards in places that previously were completely unaccessible. Dr. Osvaldo Loa is one of the preeminent oceanographers in Chile and in Latin America. He's one of the key individuals in the Millennium Center in uh, Chile, and he has been instrumental in conducting long-term research in the waters off Chile and instituting potentially a long-term sea observatory on the bottom of the seafloor off the coast of Chile to help them with climate change models, data collection, earthquake analysis, all that type of thing. So he is absolutely the right person to take down to the bottom of the Atacama Trench. I'm uh, an oceanographer, and I'm interested uh, right now in looking at the deep ocean, how the deep ocean works, particularly in terms of uh, its biology. One of the main things that I want to understand is how uh, organisms adapt to live at huge pressures. So we, we want to understand who is there, but also why they are there, what adaptations they have so they can live under huge pressures. Uh, Chile has a rare opportunity to take place in a big exploration, you know, to go where nobody else uh, has gone. So I think that's um, capturing the attention of the media and the society uh, because it has this feeling of adventure. And I think also that's why the, the media is, uh, you know, interested. My hopes for this trip are uh, first to be the first Chilean that goes in any ocean trench, to go down in any ocean trench, that uh, we discover some things that we don't even expect they exist, and also that we get, uh, we do cool science, that we make some important discoveries about the Atacama Trench. Uh, this is going to be an attempt on the, the deepest point in the uh, Atacama Trench. It is rumored to be one of the most interesting deep ocean trenches in the world because of all of the nutrients that are poured into this basin from the continent. So we're very excited, hopefully, to see a lot of wildlife. The overall plan is we're going to go full bore on this. We're going to deploy all three landers and the submersible, which is something that we do in situations like this. The lander scaff will be deployed at this deepest point as a navigation beacon. So if we can get to that lander, given that they drop pretty straight down compared to the submersible, we think we'll be assured of getting to the deepest point. The idea is to drop the submersible about 300 meters east of the lander so that we know when we get to the bottom, we just need to go west to start tracking to the lander. And from there, we'll continue to go due west. You can actually see the ridge here. We're gonna go up the ridge, which usually provides exposed rock where there's a lot more marine life typically. And then we're gonna, if we have time, go a little bit down the other side, but that would be about five or six kilometers, which is about a three hour mission. Going through this planning um, first gave me, um, a, made me feel secure because I see that, you know, I'm dealing with people that they know what they are doing. And of course, also realizing that, you know, we're here now, you know, that it's, that it's happening. You know, we have been planning this for a few, a few months and now uh, we're going. And so I feel like a kid going to, to uh, a big uh, adventure.
The moment that uh, Victor and I left the mission control, I was uh, very calm, but also uh, thinking about the um, importance <laughs> of what we were doing that day. I mean, we were going to be the first human beings to go down the Atacama Trench. And so I, felt, uh, I felt honored and uh, privileged to be part of uh, a story that was being written, and I was uh, part of it. It's amazing. And you are in. You're good to close the hatch. You're good to close the hatch. See you. See you on the inside. It was an experience in itself to go down with Victor. On the way down, we uh, basically met each other. You know, we started talking about who we were, how did we get to the moment we are. For example, he asked me, how did I get into marine biology? And, and that was fantastic because I, I got to know about his life and also I got the chance to also talk about my life, you know, coming from different worlds and, and meeting there, you know, <laughs> going down to more than eight thousand meters. Congratulations, you're hey. the bottom of the Atacama Trench. <laughs> yeah, very well done. Okay. Surface depth eight zero six one. Life support good. At bottom. Repeat. At bottom. Aleph, Aleph, surface depth eight zero six one. Life support good. At bottom, at bottom. The moment we, we reached the bottom, uh, Victor congratulated me, or we, con we congratulated each other. We knew at that moment, both of us, that we have done something that nobody else had done before. And, and, and that's, of course, very emotional, uh, very gratifying, too. Looking out, one of the first things we realized that there were many Holothurians, a lot of Holothurians, you know. We could see, we can, you know. And that was uh, completely unexpected uh, for me and for Victor. Victor had have, <laughs> have done so many dives before, and he had never seen so many Holothurians in the same place. To see the rocks, you know, some bare rocks, some, some uh, you know, with sand. But it was a beautiful geology in, in a very short range. And to me, also, uh, being able to see microbial mats was the highlight uh, of, of my dive in terms of my professional background. Because that's something that I, I was expecting to see, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. Just caught it. Going up uh, was a different trip than going down. And, and one of them was that we started talking with Victor about other things, more personal things. We play some music, you know, I talk about, you know, in my case, I talk about um, my kids. I even show him a picture, you know, it was, it was look more like talking to a friend. So I, I, as I mentioned before, like, I went down with a colleague, I came up with a friend. Fantastic. Oh, the best experience in my life. It was superb. And going with Victor, which was just so smooth, it was beautiful. This might be the seventh or eighth trench I've dived in. It was a little bit unique. There was a lot of wildlife, but this was a great expedition to go down with uh, Dr. Oswaldo for the first uh, crew descent, take the first Chilean down as well. But we got to see some really interesting wildlife, and we're really looking forward to going through all the video and seeing what we might have missed.
One thing that was unique about this expedition is just how many young people we had on board the ship, scientists who were studying at the university with uh, Dr. Oloa, and they were able to go and actually help with the experiments and the data collection and all of that. And I think it's essential in science that we deeply involve younger people in STEM programs or even getting people interested in STEM so that they can become the next generation of explorers and scientists that can contribute to our overall education as a species. If it's done in isolation just with the people that have been doing it for 30 or 40 years, that doesn't allow for continuity. It doesn't allow for new ideas. And so I think it's essential to get people in the field directly interacting with the equipment, the individuals, and frankly, some of the excitement that surrounds real groundbreaking research in some of these areas. As an oceanographer, uh, used to work at, at sea and deploying equipment, working with landers is a completely new game. This is something that we have recently started using, but coming here to the pressure drop and having not one lander, but three landers is a tremendous opportunity because it's a, it's a different way of doing uh, marine research. Uh, it, I think that landers will become more and more important in the future. They are excellent platform because you can put different sensors, you can put traps. We're doing cutting edge science. Uh, we, we're hoping to answer some important questions in the field. And I think we are going to somehow be able to uh, open the, the box, you know, and on, on what is down there and how they are adapted to live in this environment. Uh, and uh, also, I'm sure we are going to discover some new organisms. Looking back at, the, at this experience, you know, it confirmed several things to me, you know. First, for an enterprise as this one, first you need to have an excellent team, not only in a, a professional level, but, but also people that you get along with, that you can trust. So for me, that's number one. Second, of course, you need the technology, the technology that can take you to the frontier. And third, you also need a support on land, you needed support outside. You know, we had to get permits, we had to get support, we ran into trouble. So at least those three components are necessary for something like this to happen and to be successful. I feel first honor and privilege that uh, Victor and his team invited me to join, but also that he trusted Chilean science. It was not just one person coming and diving, it was a whole team that came here to do research. I think one thing that's unique about this diving system that we've created is that it is a crewed, manned diving submersible that allows a scientist and a pilot to go down in the actual environment. And it's often said, well, why can't you just use robots to do that? And the analogy I think that's quite effective is saying, well, one can look at a wonderful football game in brilliant 4K in your home, but that's materially different than actually going to an actual game and seeing it and smelling it and hearing everything. And there's part of that that I think is essential to science as well. Being able to go directly in the environment and interact with it is a different feeling and may generate different ideas or different emotions and allow us to discover more than we would just simply by using robots. One thing that's really exciting about doing technology development and then using it to execute really good science is that it's a continual improvement process. What we've discovered is that we had the opportunity to not just build this device and then deploy it, but to make it better and better with every expedition. And we've done that on this expedition as well. And we're planning on adding new technology to the submersible for its future missions. Everything from a deep ocean side scan sonar to scientific retrieval trays towards better communication devices, all these different things. So that's what keeps it exciting for me is to continue to push the boundary technologically but then use it with these scientists to actually collect more and better information for the benefit of everyone.